All right, everybody, welcome to Global Running Day. This webinar is presented by UCAN, and we are so excited. Hey, head over to UCAN.co because 26.2% off. Yes, 26.2% off through the end of the day today, and you'll get all sorts of products. And we're going to hear from our guests today about how they use UCAN later in the show. So make sure you stay tuned and stay with us. But I have two amazing guests today. My name, first and foremost, is Carrie Tellefson. I am part of the UCAN family. I am an Olympian and now podcast host at See Tolly Run, do all kinds of broadcast work and stay, staying in the running community as much as I can. But the stars of the show today, Meb Kaflesky, Meb, wave your hand. He is a four-time Olympian, Olympic silver medalist. He won both the Boston and the New York City Marathon. You guys know him from all of the years that he's racing. He also is a girl dad. He's got three girls at home and a lovely wife. So we're going to hear all about that today. And then we also have Emily Sisson, who I think is quite potentially the greatest of all time. She is the American record holder in both the half and the marathon. She is a US Olympian, a multiple time USATF national champion from way back in the day all the way to current right now. So thank you both for coming on the show. Yeah, of course. Thanks, Thanks for having us. So first and foremost, it is global running day. So Emily, you tell us first, what was your run like today? Have you already run? Yes, I already ran. I did a 10 mile run and that's it for me today because I'm racing in three days. So Okay, so just 10 miles. Yeah, just 10. <laughs> <laughs> and how long did that take you? Uh, that took uh, about 70 minutes, I guess. Yeah, it's all relative. Coming from marathon training, I'm like, oh, just 10. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And are you in Flagstaff right now or where are you training? No, I'm in Rhode Island, actually. Yeah, right. I'm here, um, actually here for a while. I'm going to do my fall marathon build up here and I'm going okay. to do some shorter races on the East Coast before then. Nice. Okay. Meb, what was your run like today? I did a virtual 5K run but uh, for the New York World Runners and then also did uh, another three and a half miles, so about five miles what I did today. So not like Emily's pace, but mine is uh, about 7.45, 7.30 per mile, but it's mm -hmm. leisurely nice to be able to do it in Tampa, Florida. Hold on, Matt. Did you do a 5K with New York Roadrunners? Virtual, yeah. And then you did another three and a half miles? Right. So let's do the math again. That's six and a half. Six miles, something <laughs> like that. <laughs> I have to stop. You know, the thing is I have to stop and ask people and it's kind of weird. Hey, can I take a picture? And can yeah, I take yeah. a picture? Kind of do a couple of other things, but you watch it stopping. So, but yeah, I usually go, I don't want to miss that 5k or 3.1 mile and right and I have my watch and then I have my phone so the phone is stopped now <laughs> and I get well, on the watch I love it I went for three miles this morning and I had to take a selfie so I know there were like eight people that saw me trying to set it up on the tree and oh my gosh that took longer than the actual run um as we get into this I want to just go through a few things with you guys you are at two different stages in your career Meb you and I both don't really love the word retired but let's just face it we are right Emily you are still very much in the competitive life so what is it like for you Emily to have to leave your house today on a day that we're all celebrating but you still are getting into that mindset when you're going out for your 10 mile run so what was today's mindset like uh, well, today I was actually thinking a bit about the race this weekend and getting excited to race again. Um, I haven't raced done in a few months now, so I'm just excited to get back out there. Um, but yeah, I feel like what gets me out the door now is I'm still like just really motivated by um, the goals that I have, that I, the things I still want to accomplish in my career. So uh, yeah, that gets me out the door for on the days I'm like tired and maybe not, uh, <laughs> not like feeling up for it sometimes. But, um, but then, yeah, I also have a lot of people to run with in Rhode Island too. So that's the other nice thing of being back here is I have people to meet up with. And I think that also makes training much more fun. Um, mm -hmm. I with Molly Huddle yesterday. Um, I'm hoping to meet up with Mariel Hall soon. Um, and yeah, so it's just nice having people to meet up with. It makes it more fun, which is important. Yeah, that community. Meb, you and I did the broadcast at the Boston Marathon. So you went to the other side of the camera, right? You were behind the camera this time. Well, it, you were still on the camera, but you weren't necessarily the star of the show, right? We were watching all the marathoners run and you were chatting about that. What gets you out the door still? Why did you add another three miles to your run this morning? 
Well, first and foremost, thank you for holding my hand during that podcast with you and Jan Anderson. You guys uh, did an amazing job and it's great to be on the other side. But I was really nervous for that. And I usually am nervous for a marathon because yeah. <laughs> marathon is you hard. can control it. But, you know, it just gives the respect to how hard it is. And But I had a lot of fun on the stage. Yeah, running in running today, it was fun just to be able to run. It's never easy. Even though as a professional, we try to make it look easy, and sometimes we got to breathe harder to kind of, kind of pull our competitors so yeah. that they can make a move and then cover the move later and then make another move. So, but other than that, it's just a beautiful sport that gets you out the door. I always said whether you are an elite athlete or a daily runner, the hardest part is getting out the door. So, but you have to have a routine, and that's what mm-hmm. I do. I like try to get out and out of the door early in the morning, get it get it over with, and. I always love my runs and, and coming back, it just gives you a little bit more energy. Mab, I got to know, sometimes I wear my running clothes to bed. <laughs> Do you ever, would you ever, you know, cause we both, you know, we wear the shorty shorts. It's not, it's not like we would get overheated at night then. Do you ever wear your running shorts to bed so you can get out earlier in the morning? No, definitely not. <laughs> uh, I have slept my naps on my shorts for sure, <laughs> or my tights or whatever. Yeah. When I, when I, whenever I was in Mammoth Lakes to stay warm, but uh, not plan the night before that to get out. No, I usually put them aside. Okay, in the in the restroom or downstairs, so I don't wake anybody up, and then yeah. go for a run. But. I, I don't sleep with them. You don't I sleep with them. I do, peeps. <laughs> I will sleep in my running clothes. Emily, do you have any tips for how you get out early? Uh, I'm not a morning person, but I feel like living in Phoenix for a few years, I definitely had to become one. Um, and like Med said, actually, the hardest part is just getting out the door. And that's what I always say to my husband, actually starting a workout to you. I'm like, the hardest part is just getting started. And I'll like stand there for like two minutes and just say that. Yeah. <laughs> he's like, all right, let's go. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, I find uh, getting in your routines good. Having people to meet holds you a bit accountable. And I think that helps as well. Um, and then, yeah, I don't know. I think, uh, what's that saying? Uh, is it motivation follows action? Or do you know the one I'm talking about? Yeah, I, I mean it right I, there. I, yeah, yeah. Um, I find that's true for me sometimes when it's like early morning and I'd rather sleep in, um, just getting up, making my coffee, making my espresso, yeah. whatever it is, um, meeting my friend, getting out the door. Then like once I get going, I usually I almost always feel good and I'm like happy I'm out there. Um, but yeah, I'm not naturally a morning person at all. So yeah. So, yeah. That's funny. Well, maybe you need to start wearing your clothes to bed. Maybe. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. It works. Know it it totally works. Okay. So do you guys remember how it all began? I mean, Mab, we've heard your story a lot about going to your Phi Ed class and, and running in your jeans and things like that. Like how, how do you remember that, that moment or do you remember that moment when this all sort of started? Matt, why don't you go first? Well, first of all, Emily, I got to say, you know, I can only imagine when you sat out locks at your door at 6 a.m. or 7 a.m. Oh. <laughs> 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 yeah. Or you are, or, you know, uh, that's, that was the hardest part. Early. You know, that was the yeah. hardest part of, you know, training, getting tested, and and people lucky. I was like, oh, okay, well, I was just in the uh, <laughs> sleep room, you know, and right. you were deep sleep. But, you know, running is running, and I'm glad they're doing, you know, to doing the testing. Um, for me, running started when, um, you know, in seventh grade, just to get an A in a t-shirt at Roosevelt Junior High, which I'm still in touch with Coach Dick Lord. And, you know, it's just how, you know, it was fun, but I just want to get an A and see what I could do. And little did I realized that, you know, I had my God-given talent and to run 520 and kind of opened up his eyes and says, you're going to go to the Olympics. And I'm like, where's my A? Where's my shirt? And I can even say those words. I just have to point it out and say in an A, you know, and, but, you know, on this global running day, running has done so many wonderful things for me. And it took me around the world. I have put in over hundred, over 120,000 miles on those legs and to amazing, amazing places all over the, not only nation, but globally. And mm-hmm. to be able to just reflect back that seventh grade where, you know, trying to get an A and a t-shirt and run around the by the zoo in San Diego it was awesome mm-hmm. feeling and it gave me a boost of confidence it gave me the friendship that I have made and, and and if I look back all people that I know is through running or academia you know and that's mm-hmm. pretty awesome feeling and to be able to reflect back and appreciate those people who help you through the ups and downs because in in life as, as in a marathon you go through the struggles but 
those people are there for you to help you know, to the good and bad. I love it. Emily, how about you? How did you get into it? Very similar story, actually. Uh, it started uh, maybe fourth grade or fifth grade uh, for the presidential fitness test. Do you remember that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we had to run uh, the mile. And, uh, and I, I beat all the boys and I thought that was just so cool. <laughs> and so, um, I remember then thinking I really enjoyed it, but I was really into playing a bunch of different sports and my parents really encouraged me to do a lot of team sports, um, at a young age, especially cause I was like a pretty shy kid. They're like, oh, this will actually be good for you, um, to meet people <laughs> and socially probably. Um, but then as I got older, a lot of my friends from my soccer team were like, why don't you do uh, cross country with us? It'll get us fit for the soccer season. And I just fell in love with it. And um, like Meb said, I've met so many people, like most of my close friends, um, my husband, I met through running and uh, I can't imagine my life without them and the places I've gone to go. Yeah, just, uh, yeah, it's kind of crazy looking back. I just started in PE, <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, it's brought so much. Yeah, you know, Meb kind of touched on it. And Emily, I want to I want to have you answer this first. You have gone through some ups and downs, even though at the top of the show, we name off all these things that you've done and you have been winning since you were a junior high, you know, well, no, even in elementary, you have been winning. But in junior high, you're setting national records like you've been so good for so long. But how do you handle that up and down the highs and lows? I think the older I get, the better I get at handling it. Um, still anytime I get like a big injury initially, I'm pretty bummed. I'm like, like, I don't like, I don't want to be injured. <laughs> no one wants to be injured or anytime there's a big setback, but I definitely, um, feel like the older I get, the better perspective I have. And, um, after like a day of feeling frustrated or two, I kind of am able to, um, move on, come up with a plan. How do I get healthy? How do I enjoy my life in the meantime, if I'm not able to run right now, or if running's not going great, because you don't want that um, one part of your life to affect all of it. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think also it helps as I've surrounded myself with a lot of people that just have really good outlooks on life. And they're very like, uh, even keel, I guess is how I describe them. Um, a lot of my friends and my husband, none of them ever seem to get really like bothered one way or another. Um, they're all very like easygoing kind of people. Um, so I think I've picked up, up things off the people I surround myself with. And then just as I get older, um, I'm able to ease, like more easily recognize, well, this is just part of it. Like, this is just part of the sport. And I still get frustrated at times. I'm not always, um, like, I'm not always able to just say like, oh, not a big deal. I'm injured. <laughs> Some days I'm like, oh, this does suck, but, yeah. um, it helps me handle the setbacks better when I'm able to kind of just step back and, um, look at the big picture, I guess that makes sense. Um, and have those people I surround myself with kind of encouraging that outlook. Yeah. You're training right now. How's it going? It's good. Yeah. I had an injury, um, back, uh, was it was in March. Um, that took me like a month to come back from, um, which isn't really that big of, um, a setback, but it was at the wrong time. I had to pull out of uh, my spring marathon and then, um, yeah, training has been going well. I came down from altitude and I actually feel a lot better. So, yeah. um, so yeah, I'm enjoying being at sea level again. Awesome. And you said you're racing this weekend. Yeah. Yep. New York. Roadrunners 10K, which is yeah, the mini. The mini. Yeah. yeah, it's going to be super fun. I'll see you out there. I'll see you. Oh, out there. I'm going to do that. Yeah, I'm really yes. excited. I love that one. Yeah, I it's a too. hard course, but it's really fun. So yeah. you can almost forget how uh, challenging of a 10K it is. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Surrounded by all kinds of women, which is so fun. Um, Matt, yeah. you too have dealt with some ups and downs. I mean, we know that. And anyone that knows your story in sport knows that you've dealt with a lot illness, uh, injury, all of that. But I think what would be interesting now is you deal with a little bit more of like fatigue factors just by being dad and being busy. You know, you're flying places, you're doing all kinds of speaking and different events. So how do you deal with that now as maybe more of a regular runner? You know, a marathon is a great metaphor for life. As Emily said, you know, if injuries are part of the sport and if they tell her, hey, Emily, just do this, you're gonna run your 218, you would do it in a heartbeat. Mm. <laughs> you know, but there is no guarantees. And when I was injured uh, in 2008, it took me a year and a half to do therapy. If, I, if somebody tells me you're going to come back and win New York City Marathon, I would do it in a heartbeat. But as Coach Larson said, my coach, there's no guarantee, but you have to have that drive, that tenacity, that perseverance to say, hey, it might not be, and I don't know what's waiting, but I got to keep doing it. And to be a, 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 the father also, you know, there's no guarantee, you know, you're trying to do the best here, Donison. I try to do the best we can to raise our three daughters. 
you know, they're going to have their own life, their own future and whatnot. But at this stage, we try to be there for them as much as we can and support them and help them make good decisions. But at the end of the day, they're on the driver's side. Yeah. Good decisions, good decisions. And, you know, we try to get them to the best you can. But at the end of the day, they got to make those maneuvers and decisions mm -hmm. for themselves and guide them to be the best you can. So, yeah, it is, you know, I usually was not a napper when I was an elite athlete, but after, after I retire and been around, I, I'm definitely a napper. <laughs> really? Are they like short ones, like 15 minuters or are they? Well, a good 60 minutes? Put my, you know, running is a 24 hour job, you know, yeah. you know, you go, 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 go. You have to do something stretching, icing with mm -hmm. gym and therapy and all that stuff. And then you put your head in the pillow, you or you know, you're going to get knocked out and sleep, but also you're resting for the next day. Yeah. But now it's like, as soon as um, the TV is on or in the evening or something, I'm like, <laughs> oh, <"I'm out." laughs> I'm glad you not off. Um, Emily and Mev and I were all talking about TikTok before we hit record. <laughs> and I think that maybe, Mev, your agility training now is maybe TikTok. Yeah. Are, you know, you are you kicking <laughs> the legs and moving around? I see my daughters do that, but I just, you know, it's, it would be interesting to do, but they, they, they're into TikTok yeah, yeah. and, and, uh, <laughs> And I'm like, you know, they, but then they get back. Oh, I learned this from TikTok. I'm like, okay. But, you know, <laughs> we got to see this. We got to see this. I want you to do some. Um, Emily, can you tell us what your favorite moment so far has been in your running career? In my running career? Uh, yeah, it was making the Olympic team um, in 2021 on the track, that 10K. Yeah. That was a that tough one. That definitely stands out. It was, it was so hot, but it you looked really hot. so good. I probably had a bit of an advantage because I've trained in Phoenix. I wasn't coming from Phoenix, so I hadn't like been adapting to the heat, um, but I at least was more familiar with it, I feel like. So that probably played to my advantage, but it was still really hard. Um, yeah, but I don't know. I just like, it was one of those days, like, I feel like you get a few days in your career where you just feel like amazing and I felt really good and um yeah just things like worked out that day and like Meb said you can work really hard and there's no guarantee what's yeah. um going to come but you just have to work hard um regardless and that's mm -hmm. how everyone is on the start line and that's um yeah I felt like that whole buildup I was working really hard to making that team and I'm like you know like I did my best um if at the end of the day, three people are better than me, like it is what it is. Uh, but I was really happy that it came together on that day. And I'm going to try to top that race because it's my favorite so far. But um, I want to have another one like that. <laughs> well, you've had plenty to choose from. My goodness. <laughs> Mab, what is like when you think of your most memorable, what is it? I think a lot of us might know, but let's hear. High school level? No, I'm just <laughs> <laughs> We're not going that far back. Uh, no, I mean, the one that stands out. Um, First and foremost, it's nice to have the options to choose from, yeah. you know, to be able to do yeah. the Olympic silver medal or win in New York or finishing fourth. At the, one of my outstanding finish was finishing fourth at the Olympic Games, come from behind at the London 2012. But the most meaningful victory is definitely the Boston Marathon in 2014, because what was on the line and, you, do, you know, you have a personal dialogue within yourself for 365 days. I was thinking, what can I do on Patriots Day to... You know, for the runners, you have those constant dialogues. And when it does click, it does click. And, you know, especially to be, to be the underdog and nobody expecting you to do it. And mm -hmm. you have those dreams and those dreams were slipping away from you. And, but on the most important day, when it counts the most, and it came all together for me and I have the bibs of the victims on my, on my bib and on my chest to draw inspiration it's a thrill of lifetime and then to mm -hmm. have to lead the 36,000 people who want to do something positive and to show that the perseverance we're not giving up and to be, be the leader of that. It just, it, it still gives me chills you know, oh. and, and be able to pull the victory for all of us on Patriots yeah. day. It means the world to me. I watched it, you know, before when I was doing some work, uh, studying and prepping and serious goosebumps, you know, you could just see the drive and you knew it was bigger than you that day. And it was pretty spectacular. You both have had such a strong belief. Like we can see that, we know that, you know, you put it out there, you have your goals out there. Um, but where does that come from? Emily, where does that belief come from? Was it from your family? Did your parents raise you that way? Did you always have this belief that you could do something really pretty big, which you've done a lot of big things? Um, I don't know. I think it is more internal. Like it's uh, like this intrinsic thing that I feel like I've always had. 
Um, I'm sure my parents did play a role. <laughs> I just can't think of anything uh, specific. But yeah, I don't know. I've just always, um, like even from like a young age and like high school, like I didn't know how far like I was going to go in the sport, but I just was so curious to see what I could do. And I love that like curiosity. Um, and I just felt like I had a lot in me and I just wanted to see what could come of it. I never would have thought of all this. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I just have always like felt like deep down, like, oh, I think I have like, I have something here I want to explore. Um, as cheesy as that sounds. <laughs> and, yeah. uh, and yeah, I don't know. I think it definitely comes from within. Um, but I don't know where it started. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Mab, you know, you've always been one that has basically said, if someone tells you, you can't do it, you'll do it. Right. <laughs> and like, where does that come from? Like, did you think you had that when you were 13 years old or has, have you grown into that? Have you worked your mind to tell yourself to do that? You have to grow into your mind to, to be able to prove people wrong. I've been mm -hmm. always the underdog, but opportunities, my upbringing has a lot, a lot to deal yeah. with it. It's just, knowing that you barely had anything to eat, eat and dirt to survive and you have opportunities, you want to maximize them to the best you can. And carpe diem, seize the moment, you yes. know, or, or m and one shot, one opportunities. As a marathon, especially, you got to do it because otherwise you got to wait six months or a year and whatnot. So when your fitness is there, you want to capitalize. Uh, believe in yourself is important, but when I am a follower of the sport, I'm a student of the sport, so when I follow and thinks I said not so nice about me, I'm like, all right, it's on yeah. then. I'm going to prove you wrong. <laughs> I love uh, it. <laughs> you know, and it's something in a way it's a redemption, you know, and when I didn't make the Olympic team in 2008, what I thought I was, I told your Donna's when we were watching the marathon on TV, I said, I definitely would have medals, possibly silver, definitely bronze medal. Not that I could have won, beat Sammy Wanjura. He was out of the chart, but I knew silver and bronze was a possible and then you say, okay, any Olympian that lined up with me, whether it was a cross country, a 10K or any road race, they got target in the back. I'm going to get you. And mm -hmm. so those are the things that you can have dialogue within yourself and believe in yourself. And sometimes it's not going to hit a home run. So, but it makes you appreciate those days when you do and believe in yourself. Hey, I didn't make it today, but I'm going to make it next time. So sometimes you finish third or as Emily said, you know, we just, you, when you run your best, if three people are better than you that day, they're better than you that day, but it doesn't mean they're going to be better than you all the time. <laughs> so you have to just kind of say, okay, respect the competitor, respect the distance. And uh, when you, when the opportunity provides, you want to show your, your, your strength to the best that you can. I would like to have looked at your running watch to see if your heart rate got up a little bit. Just talking about your conversation <laughs> with your Donos, like, thinking like I just got a little fired up thinking that you were sitting at home knowing that you could have been in second or third like that has to still kind of get you revved up absolutely it does and uh yeah I wasn't wearing a heart rate but <laughs> it would have been interesting <laughs> to see yeah I'm sure I'm sure Emily you are the oldest of four girls in your family so you have three little sisters yeah, when you yeah. talk to, I mean how do you talk to them about them because they some of them are athletes um, mm -hmm. you know, like they obviously have their own goals and part of this webinar, we want to talk about goal setting, but I think we all know that you guys can set your goals and you show us that, but how do you teach that to your younger sisters or, you know, the younger girls of the next generation? Yeah, I, we're, we're actually all very different Two of my sisters, actually all three of them, they're all runners. Um, two of them run in college. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I think, uh, like I, I do try to set a good example, but um, I think more importantly to me is like hearing, like when I talk to them, like really listening, hearing about things that they're interested in, passionate about. Um, and I don't know, anything I can do as an older sister that kind of helps build their confidence and uh, like self-esteem so that they can go uh, like after their goals. Like that's the only thing I feel like I can really do is just listen to what, um, yeah, their goals are and just encourage that. And uh, yeah, kind of uh, be that like, uh, What's that saying? That like that just supportive sister, that like go girl or whatever. Like you got yeah. this. <laughs> yeah. Um, but uh yeah, I don't know. For me, just like yeah, talking to them, hearing things that they're interested in, building their confidence. To me, that's the most uh that's the thing I I think about, I guess. Yeah. What are your goals? Can you share some of them? My goals? Yeah. Yeah. Uh the last two that I feel like I've gone and do a lot of things I wanted to do, which is really cool. Um, I, I would love to make another Olympic team, but the last two things I really want to do, um, 
is I'd like to medal and I'd like to win a marathon major. And um, even if I just did one of those, that'd be amazing. Mm -hmm. uh, they're very hard to do. <laughs> so, but those are the last two things on my uh, like list, I guess. It's so fun. I <laughs> not love that it. I keep, not that I keep a list, but yeah, those are the two things that really motivate me. You don't keep a list. No, I don't. I mean, I don't write it down. <laughs> I just you like, don't. I, in my head, I'm like, I really want to do those two things, whether they happen or not. I don't know, but I'll keep working. So see, yeah. I did. I put it on the wall. I put it on the mirror. Yeah. I don't know if it's like people are more visual. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. A lot of people write on the mirror. I've seen uh -huh. that. Uh -huh. Like right times or right. Um, yeah, no, I just, I, don't, I guess I don't write things down that often, but I, I think about them. <laughs> yeah. Like I have the American records up on the wall because they weren't mine. <laughs> you have the American <laughs> records. I, still, yeah, I guess yeah I still yeah. learn faster but um but yeah I know a lot of people the mirror is a common one I hear the right. mirror on the wall is where people yeah. rate them Matt. or trainer lock or trainer lock I think when you kind of oh, yeah. weekly you know but now with the smart watches it's kind of hard it's just oh save you know whereas before we used yeah. to write them and yeah say, hey you know I want to I remember writing mine I said under 27 27 20 27 19 for the american record the 10k and yep. so yeah. it's like you have something to you know or you put 50 or 75 80 miles a week and then okay next week i want to go to 90 and then this and then oh how am i making progress toward that mm -hmm. idol or there is making yeah. all things and things like that or metal uh you know sometimes like i said it personally when i was at sydney australia after the 2000 olympics i know i was happy to be an olympian but i'm like i said it myself I want to win a medal for our country and mm -hmm. at the stadium, I didn't write it down per se, but I know it was planted in my head. The next thing is that, you know, and so, and Emily, just keep believing in yourself. Those things, uh, they're like you said, they're not easy, but at the same time, just uh, you're on the right track now. Just gotta, it's not how hard you train now. It's like how smart right. to be able yeah. to do that because, we, you know, sometimes we made those mistakes before and you want to make less mistakes and let your wisdom drive you be the best that you can to get closer to your goals. Okay. Yeah. Dig into yeah. that a little bit. Cause I think like all of us were hanging on your words right there, Matt, but <laughs> you, it's not how hard you train, how smart you train. And I think all of us can learn from that right there. What did you mean? Absolutely. I think it's, uh, you know, sometimes it's not the extra mile, extra mile. It's a, uh, now you're you're older, wiser, and smarter. You know what your body can take and what your body cannot take. I made that mistake in 2008. Uh, it was due to just pure hard work why I didn't go to the Olympics. If it was about hard work, I would have been there. But know your body what is able to do. And sometimes rest is training. Mm -hmm. <laughs> is 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 you know like you you know you you, need, you can to recover. You be able to just replenish. You know, something, you know, you don't have to be running, you know, you just observe your body, what you need to do. A day off will be a big monumental for your next goals or mm -hmm. even a week off sometimes. It is so hard to train smart though. We all get so <laughs> excited. We want to do more. It is the hardest thing. But I think once you really realize the discipline that it takes, that's what makes you kind of a, a great athlete is figuring out how you can stay disciplined by that rest. On Global Running Day, we are top eight personality. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Pretty much every single day. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's, it's hard to say when. So, but yeah. at the same time, that's why you have a good team behind you to just right. say, hey, you know, if they tell you, you know what, if you're touching something or your your knee or your calf or your Achilles, mm -hmm. you know, you, your body's not there yet. So if they can take a precaution, prehab instead of rehab. Before you get there, we want to make this, and that's what I mean. You have to be wiser. You know, yeah. don't, don't, it's not about the miles anymore. You already have plenty of miles, plenty of speed built up now. Yep. Just let it flow. Let it flow. And you talked <laughs> about having a team behind you. So let's talk about this you can team. I mean, I got my shirt on. So I, I got my, my jersey on today. So I want to hear a little bit about your story, both of you getting in onto this you can team and, and what it means to you to be a part of this, this amazing community. Emily, you want to go? For some reason, I thought Nova's going to go. Um, <laughs> yeah, I can go. Uh, yeah, so I started using You Can last year, and I used it going into my Chicago Marathon buildup. And the one, like, one huge difference I noticed in Chicago versus any marathon I'd done uh, before, any buildup I'd done before, was I was recovering a lot better. Um, and I was also, like, uh, 
yeah, getting a little less hangry <laughs> and like irritable after like long workouts. Uh, even my husband noticed it. And that was actually the one thing I chose to focus on going into the Chicago marathon build. I was like, I want to focus on like recovery, like making sure I'm resting, making sure I'm recovering well. Um, and part of that was I was coming off, uh, like having COVID and kind of struggling with that. And I just was like, oh, it doesn't matter what training I'm doing right now. I just feel like I'm not resting. I'm not recovering. So um, I focused a lot on sleep and a lot on diet. And I thought the two of those like helped a lot. Um, I started using, you can uh, edge gels before a lot of my runs, especially in the summer when it was really hot in Rhode Island and immediately afterwards using the energy plus protein. And I use the chocolate fav flavor. So it to me, it tastes like chocolate milk when I mix it with like almond milk or oat milk or whatever. Um, but it doesn't upset my stomach and it helps hold me over until I can sit down and have like a, like a proper meal, um, and snacked on a lot of the, the energy bars as well. So yeah. I just found that like, I was sleeping a lot better, resting better. I wasn't, my mood wasn't like fluctuating. Like it had been, um, in previous marathon buildups. And I thought that was just normal. Cause I'm still new to the marathon. I just assumed, oh, well, this is marathon training. I'm supposed to be tired. I'm supposed to be cranky. Uh, but I actually never felt really cranky <laughs> the last, uh, and I never felt really like I felt tired from all the training going into Chicago, but I didn't feel overtired. Um, and so to me, like, it was just really eye-opening and sounds silly because I was nearly 30, 31 at the time, um, just discovering how important it is to rest and fuel and recover after runs. I thought I was doing a good job of it, but then when I made it a priority, I realized uh, how much room there was for improvement um, yeah. when I made that as important as the training itself. Can you tell when you don't use it? Yeah, I can tell, especially if like, um, like I can tell when my energy levels are kind of crashing mm -hmm. <laughs> and I start, it's mainly the crankiness I notice, um, or like being irritable or just like kind of, um, like needing food right mm -hmm. away, um, after a run. Um, and yeah, that's, that's what I noticed the most actually. Yeah. What's your favorite? Probably the, uh, chocolate energy plus protein. Cause it does taste like chocolate milk to me. And then the, the energy bars too. the chocolate fudge one's really good. It tastes like good. I think it tastes like a brownie. Sarah Hall said it tastes like a Charleston chew. And I'm like, oh, that's a good comparison. Um, so yeah, some, some kind of combination of that. <laughs> yeah. Both are amazing. They've done a good job of that. <laughs> Mev, how about you? I mean, how did you use it when you were training? And then what do you use it now for when you're not necessarily training, but just in everyday living? You can believe it. I've been with you can since 2010, 13 years ago. And Jonah is them, you know, the main team player in here and how started with his rare disease and the fellow men people have been family it's more a partnership than sponsorship but it's been a just a, a unity of family to optimize uh performance for me and as a, as a marathon runner i was able to use protein was my first one my recovery i knew the soreness was not there i know i could recover within possibly you know within hours or even the next day you don't feel the soreness so i you had a 10 ounce of water and the you can shake and, you know, and I would have it before I start stretching and things like that and, and go to the ice bath, you know, it's not, uh, and, or to go to massage and things like that. It's just, it gives you two, three hours window where you're not hungry to just go, what's what I'm going to put on my, in my system. So that, I think I saw a big difference and also being lean, I think it helped me being lean when I was not putting a lot of miles and the electrolytes during the race also has worked me, has served me really well. I uh, use it in Boston and New York uh, during my races. And now um, I use the edge as well. Sometimes if I want to go for a run a little bit early, I don't have time to have to eat or something within while I stretch, I'll have that. And then able to give to the electrolytes is important because I, I'm in Florida now. <laughs> mm -hmm. So you need a, quite a bit of uh, electrolytes because I sweat a lot more now. And also with the girls, you know, the girls are playing soccer, but mainly with the Johanna, that is, we were able to give some to her team to be able to use it during, during their tournaments to, to help them a little bit with the electrolytes and, and, uh, and, and the bar. I remember one time, you know, uh, a relative asked me, Hey, uh, she did not have her breakfast. And do you have something in the car? I'm like, I definitely got, you can, there you go. <laughs> so I give her the, the bar. So this, uh, -huh. uh it's just they they have come so much far from where we, when we started and and I think it has 
transcend it to the sport and people are using it. And, and you know, like I said before, it is, it is my, it was my secret weapon, but now that I'm not running competitively, everybody, you're welcome to use it. You, <laughs> it, you gotta get able to do it. I love it. It was your secret weapon, but now the secret is out to map. It's out. Uh, the four top. Sorry. Sorry, Emily, now American you have, you have, you have to face with, those, with those ladies. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. Well, we want to do some rapid fire before we let everyone go because, you know, that's kind of the fun and you guys always bring the fun. You know, you know how to run fast, but you also know how to bring the fun. So we're going to do some rapid fire and you know I like to go fast. So, <laughs> I know. I was the fast, the, the short, short distance gal in this trio here. So you ready for it? Mm -hmm. okay. I got to stretch out. Okay, so I'm gonna do ladies first and then got and then you, Matt. So you're gonna Emily <laughs> to you. Okay. Chafing or blisters? Uh chafing. Mab? Yeah. Well, I had blisters on my feet, so I'd rather deal with the chafing. <laughs> yeah, okay. chafing just once, you know, just in the shower. And after that, the blister you gotta deal with it for weeks. <laughs> true, true. Okay. Big hair bands or boy bands? Emily. Wait, what was that? Big hair bands or boy bands? Oh, uh, big hair band. Wait, like a like a headband? Like Wait. rock rockers, oh. like <laughs> <laughs> I think I get you. I, you get nervous every time I say they have to be fast. I know. I know. I do. <laughs> I think this is just so slow. Uh, uh, boy bands. <laughs> okay, boy bands. Meb, big boy hair bands. bands or boy bands? Boy, boy bands. bands. Yeah. Oh, okay. In sync. <laughs> yeah, in sync. Sure. Okay, yeah, sure. He says. Okay. The movie Rocky or Remember the Titans. Emily, have you seen either one of them? Because they're kind of. I've not seen Rocky, so I just have to default to Remember the Titans. <laughs> okay. Rocky one, Rocky two, Rocky three. <laughs> <laughs> all of them. You like all the Rocky movies, okay? Emily, hilly courses or flat courses? Ah, uh, everyone wants me to say flat because everyone thinks I'm bad at hills. So no, you're not. Doing, uh, uh, I don't know. I feel like it's a story that follows me around. <laughs> Let's just forget about that race in both, Atlanta. Both, both. <laughs> okay, both. Mad, how about you? Championship style, hilly course. I figured. Okay. Long runs or 20 minute runs? Long run. <laughs> yeah, long run. Okay, yeah, I like the 20 minute sure. runs. Yeah, probably long runs. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Opening ceremonies or standing on podiums, which I know you could say both, but. If you can pick one, which would you rather do? Walk in the opening ceremonies again or stand on top of a podium? Emily. Stand on a podium. Okay. Standing yeah. on the podium. Me too. Okay. Morning runs or evening runs? We know this. Evening. Mm -hmm. Definitely morning. Okay. Not too <laughs> different there. You can bars or you can shakes. What do you like better? Shakes. Well, bars hey. are really good too. Okay. Shakes. I mean, shakes. I'm, I'm the shakes is what I usually do. I yeah. started so shake is me too. Well, thank you both for Ooh. coming on today. I know you're tired out. Got the heart rate up even higher, Mab. <laughs> <laughs> Those rapid yeah. questions are coming from carries. They're not easy. I know that's hard hitting, <laughs> you know, journalism right here. Hey, we appreciate you guys. You bring so much to this running community. Thank you so much. <laughs> and make sure you all go to youcan.co. Use that. 26.2% off today and every other day they always give such great discounts and packages. So thank you so much for coming today and have a great global running day. See you guys. Thank you. Bye. Bye. <laughs>